breathing is one of the best things you can do for your English because a lot of times your heart rate accelerates, whether you're nervous or excited, and that'll impact your breathing, which impacts the, the ability to access the English and the words and the creativity that you need to communicate. So start with the breath work, start with calming yourself down. And then because you're calm, you'll be able to find the words that you need. You'll be able to naturally pause if you need more time. You'll be able to remember simple is better. And then you'll be able to focus on the communication strategies that if you're working with me, you're learning about the triangle method. You're learning about being interest-based. You're learning about leading with benefit. So all of those strategies are easier to implement when you're calm. And having a routine that you can fall back on, maybe you start off confident and then you get to the point, I find that that for the leaders that I work with, a lot of times the anxiety is triggered again when you get to the Q&A segment of a presentation because you start getting nervous of what if I don't understand their question? What if I can't answer their question? What if the way I'm answering it is not clear? So sometimes there'll be multiple points where you feel that anxiety kick in and you want to you want to be able to trigger calm confidence. So maybe before the Q&A, you're also tapping your fingers or breathing a little bit. And this will give you the ability to reset at any point. So this mindset shift is really, really important. I really want you to think about what you're currently doing. So for the first week, for this week, for example, until our next episode, I want you to observe yourself. How is your breath? And I don't mean how it smells, although that's also good to check. But I mean, how are you breathing? Are you holding your breath? Are you holding your breath, especially when you know it's about to be your turn to speak or your turn to present? A lot of times you don't even realize that you stop breathing. So then by the time you get up there or it's your turn to, to speak, you're already starting from this like super high anxious level. And again, from a cognitive perspective, from a from an English perspective, you can't get the language that you need. So if you ever feel like, oh, every time I speak, I freeze and I can't think of the words, even though I know I know them, that's why you have to learn how to calm yourself physically so that you can intellectually access what you need. And this is really important because for a non-native speaker, it's multifaceted. It's not just being calm like you would have in a um, training for native speakers. It's a little bit different because you have multiple layers. It's not just about feeling calm. It's about the frustration of, if I could do this in my native language, I would do this so much better. So you're playing, sometimes you're playing that narrative. You're, you're feeling that, that competitive nature, especially at, at the level that you're, that you are, you're like, oh, these other people are presenting. They're speaking so much better than me because they're native speakers. You might think, oh, that's not fair, or I'll never be that. So you're having all these other thoughts that a native speaker doesn't have to deal with. And so that's really important to just observe that, accept that, and then figure out a way for that not to be an obstacle for you. And realistically, it that, that might not go away 100%, and that's okay, because first you're training the coping mechanisms. You're giving yourself those routines, and then as you're doing that, that'll help you perform better as you're working on the confidence, the, the inner situations that are impacting your speech. Because I want you to be able to speak clearly and confidently regardless of how you feel because I know that you need that first <laughs> you need that first now and then as you're doing that then you work on the other things for example sleeping better um, finding out where your anxiety is triggered a lot of times when I work with my clients we need to figure out okay are you feeling anxious I was just working on this last week where does the anxiety start the week before the day before the morning of the moment before and some people only feel it the moment before. Some people, especially for non-native speakers, I find it usually starts the day before. So now that you have these coping mechanisms and you're understanding the importance of breath work and you're understanding how being calm allows you to speak English better, that's your motivation. And, and the, what happens is it's a really cool domino effect because once you understand that, then that starts impacting how you prepare. When you put the pressure on yourself that if your English is good, then you can be confident, what happens in the preparation stage is you tend to script more. You tend to use more complicated grammar. 
because you're trying to have correct English. You're doing more on the writing side and written English doesn't always translate to natural verbal English. So when you're doing this mindset shift and you're accepting that I can feel calm confidence and that's going to help me speak better when you're preparing, then you can focus more on the strategies that, that you'll learn with me, which is instead of scripting, you want to, instead of scripting, which leads to like the presentation robotic voice, you can focus on sharing. You're going to look at the slides and you're going to imagine speaking to the audience. You're going to really be able to understand what do they need to hear? What word choice will help them, whether it's pre being persuasive, like help them buy my my service or help them feel more motivated if it's like an internal team meeting. That's going to be so much more effective with the word choice. So then when you're about to do the presentation or speak up in a meeting, you're going to be able to feel the first few times when you feel this, it's just, you're like, oh, I didn't have to think about it. I could just be there. I could just speak up. And it takes a lot of training for that. So I want you to accept that this is a process, but we're going to flip the script. We're going to feel calm confidence and then speak English well. And if you're ready to elevate your English communication and executive presence, or if you're looking for training resources for the international leaders in your company, book a call with me today at tanyasores.com and find out how I can help you meet your goals. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you for the next episode of Leadership English.